video two is a tutorial of the Arp Odyssey, right? It's um, a little bit of a complicated synth and uh, by posting this up, it's uh, gonna be hopefully easier for you to program your own Arp Odysseys if you're one of the remaining 300 people who've still got one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go for it. Okay, so we got the different sections here are the, there's two oscillators in the Arp Odyssey and we've got one there and one there. Uh, we've got the LFO and sample and hold mixer. We'll come onto the sample and hold in a bit. And then these are, we've got the mix of the audio sources, the modulation of the low pass filter, and then uh, the selection of the um, amplitude. And then we've got two envelopes here, an ADSR envelope and an AR envelope. Yes, attack and release. Exactly. So we started with just a pure square wave, um, and I'll just go through the theory. So let's see how yeah, we've got the square wave. We've got volume there of oscillator one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's on the square, square wave. Square wave. And this bottom row has a theory behind all of it, which you have a selection on a switch and an, and an amount on a slider. Yeah. So in this case, I've got a square wave or a sawtooth, and an amount on here. Full volume. Exactly. And then we can work our way along the row applying this same philosophy to everything. So we start off with the frequency modulation of the oscillator. So I've got an amount here. So that's being modulated by a square square wave and a C amount. And then if I go here, and obviously this is most useful in small amounts as a vibrato. And then on the top row is the frequency of the LFO. This is global to all LFO LFO parameters. And here it goes up so to make a nice little. So we've got a classic uh, vibrato yeah, style. That's good. Uh, moving next along, we've got a choice between another frequency modulation option. We can use the ADSR envelope, or which I'll start off with actually. And this is the ADSR. I'll come back to this in a second, but it's a standard yeah. envelope controls. Um, and the light ways you can hit the keyboard, light ways you can put that down to just so that it's just like a little subtle effect, and you can. Okay, so yeah, good. Um, and then the sample and hold is essentially most commonly used as a, a random source. Um, the settings for it in this middle section here. Essentially, the, the, the properties of the randomness are selected by these two switches and the levels of them are here. The mm. speed of the randomness is on the LFO again. And then you've got this thing called the output lag, which is the amount of time it takes to get between each random value. And the, you'd mainly use the sample and hold for sound effects and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, that's very good. Moving on, we have the pulse width. The pulse width only applies to the square, and that is selecting how the wave sounds, whether it's a pure square or if it's a very narrow pulse. 50 so we've got this on a square wave it's there. It has to be on a square wave. And yeah. then we, yeah, hit the... And then, then as we move the width up, yeah, we're nice. now at a tiny little pulse. And then we can modulate that amount using the modulation, uh, which can either be selected between the LFO and the ADSR. So we've got the ADSR first. Oh no, LFO. LFO there. And, and then what's this one? That sets the, oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. center point of the of the of the width. So that that's that's kind of very usable effect that one. Uh, and then if we layered it up with the other oscillator, that's where you get the nice string sounds. You so close the filter a bit. So if I layer it up with oscillator, so it's worth mentioning that oscillator two is virtually the same as one, and I'll come on to the one difference with the wave sync in a second. So I've closed the filter a bit. I'm gonna add the pulse width. Oh, that's nice. Are you left-handed? No. <laughs> <laughs> Doing well there on the left hand. Oh, that's some nice sound. We'll come on to the filter a bit more in a second, but it just gives you a... I always thought of the Arp Odyssey, such a thin-sounding synth, but we're getting some 
fat sounds. You can get out some very, very, very deep sounds if as yeah. well. So finally, the, so you can all the stuff I said about one can be applied to two. Yeah. But the key difference is we can turn this wave sync on, and that suddenly forces this oscillator to be the frequency of the first one. Uh, and, and it also makes it monophonic because up until that point we've it's, been duophonic. It's, it's been duophonic all the way, yeah, yeah. And we're now mo monophonic. And if I let's take the mod off a little bit of that so we can hear this in isolation, this effect. If I now sweep the course frequency of this. Yeah. Now the. Oh, yeah, we'll just check where you just stopped. That's nice. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the most classic one would be to apply a little bit of the ADSR envelope here, so it's just sweeping it a little bit. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So ah, that's it. No. Nice. So, um, yeah. so let's just get that right. So we just got normal, normal pitch there. We've picked this frequency to get that kind of nice thing, and then we got yeah. the um, ADSR controlling that. So we got that a little bit of that, and then the decay there, which controls the amount, and that is amazing. That's your proper yeah. five. That's all you sound, need to it? get that. Yeah, that's a great yeah, sound. That's it. That's it. Um, so yeah, we can let's turn that off. Just so we can hear okay. the next thing in isolation, yeah. which is off now. Uh, so, oh, and I'll turn off that, and I'll just read. That's now just an octave apart, is it? Yeah. So the one thing what we have here, as I mentioned right at the start, is you've got the selection of the oscillator types, whether you've got sawtooth or squares and the amounts but you've also got this third source you can see there's three sources going into the audio mixer this can either be white white or pink noise uh, weirdly the noise selection is just over here yeah. so that's on white pink is sort of deep has deeper frequencies to it. yeah and then the most interesting one is the ring mod now that's uh, that is taking the two square waves and applying a uh, Technically, it's called an XOR process to them. It does that before it hits the mixer. So yeah. you can have both of the, the square waves down and it will still work, as yeah. you can hear. It sounds a bit like a square at the moment, but that's because they're both at the same frequency. The yeah. second I shift one of them... And just like with wave sync, you can adjust that by ear to a nice point that yeah, you want to. And just show you this, look. If I hit two together. Yeah. That's when, yeah, that's the classic thing with the ring yeah. mod. And the, the combination of it being geophonic and the ring mod allows for you to do those crazy yeah. little, little things with it. Uh, and again, you could do stuff like put a bit of LFO on it as well. Yeah. Uh, or a bit of ADSR envelope. Like, It's great for highly modulated sounds. You can sort of tame it a bit by pulling the frequency of the filter down. Yeah. So that ring modulation is actually quite usable because the definition of ring modulation generally means it's an yeah. uncontrollable sound. But it's, this is actually quite it's usable. It's tameable. It's definitely yeah, tameable. Definitely good, yeah. So, right, we're, hit, we're getting on quite so, well here. Yeah, yeah. We've got a couple bits left. We've got the filter and the envelopes to look at. So the filter has three sources uh, to control it. Obviously, you've got the, the, per, the permanent value up here of the filter, so. And the resonance. Very, very powerful resonance if yeah. you want to. Put it sort of somewhere. 